Welcome Year 7 to the TCA's History Lesson on the Impact of the Peasants' Revolt. You should have already completed a live starter as part of the lesson on Microsoft Teams. Let's make a start on the lesson. Remember to pause the video to give yourself time to complete the tasks. Let's do a quick recap to remind you of the events of the Peasants' Revolt. You have four questions to answer that will help you remember the knowledge from last lesson. These are the four questions. Who was what Tyler? Why did the peasants revolt? What did King Richard promise the peasants if they went home? And what happened to the, to the rebels after the revolt ended? Watch the horrible histories clip on the next slide to help you answer these questions. You will need your book to help you answer the questions as well. Remember, the four questions that you are trying to answer are at the bottom of the screen. Who was what Tyler? Why did the peasants revolt? What did King Richard II promise the peasants if they went home? And what happened to the rebels after the revolt ended? A man called what Tyler? Funny name that, what Tyler. Must have been really confusing. But the thing is, the barons own all the land, and us peasants have to work it for them. You know, they live la -de da lives while we spend our days up to our necks in muck. It doesn't seem fair, does it? No! Well, what can we do about it? We're going to start a peasant's revolt. Yes! yes. There's a man organising this uprising, name of Watt Tyler. What was his name? That's right. No, what is the name of our leader? Got it in one. No, he means, if we was to go up to our leader and say, Hello, Mr Leader Man, what should we call you? What would he say? He'd say what? That's what I want you to tell us. What's his name? Yes, it is. No! Ah! Hold on, I think I've got it. What is the last name of our leader? <laughs> no. No, it's not. Right, and what is Mr No, No, it's not's first name? Our leader's last name is Tyler. Thank you. At last. And Mr Tyler's first name is what? Now, that's what I was asking you! Oh, I've had enough of this! Oh, hold on, just listen, will you? His first name's what? His last name's Tyler. That's why we call him what? Tyler. Get it? Oh, I see. Well, what's a silly name? Isn't it who? You're not wrong, Wen. Let's go and tell why and where for. Oh, whatever. Yes? So, the... ...a man... Have a go, then, at answering these questions in your book. Who was what, Tyler? Why did the peasants revolt? What did King Richard promise the peasants if they went home? And what happened to the rebels after the revolt ended? Pause the video here to give yourself time to complete those questions. Let's remind ourselves what was the peasants' revolt, why it started and how it ended. There were several contributing factors that led to the peasants' revolt. The peasants were angry as in 1830, Richard II introduced a new tax called the poll tax. This made everybody pay fourpence as taxes. The poll tax was introduced because the King's war against France had been going badly and the government needed money to pay for it. This war with France had been dragging on for 50 years and the government was still struggling to find money for it. Another factor that contributed to the peasants' revolt was the fact that King Richard was only 10 years old when he became king and 14 years old at the time of the revolt. In order to help him rule the country, the king had advisers to help him make decisions. However, it was judged that these advisers weren't necessarily making the best decisions for the country. The Black Death had a big impact on peasants and contributed to the peasants' revolt. The peasants had become increasingly angry that they were still poor. After the Black Death in 1348, the wages of peasants went up because there was nobody left to do the work. In 1351, a law was passed that stopped the wages from increasing. This really upset the peasants. Peasants were also angry that they had no real freedoms. They could not travel to where they wanted to unless they had permission from their baron. The final factor that contributed to the start of the peasants' revolt were priests like John Ball who were whipping the peasants into a frenzy with his speeches about equality for all less harsh laws and a fairer distribution of wealth. Let's look at the events of the Peasants' Revolt. On the 30th of March 1381, tax collectors tried to collect a poll tax. 
This was the third one in four years, and the peasants had had enough. This event is what kicked off the peasants' revolt. The king's collectors were killed by the peasants. Soon the peasants were in open rebellion against the crown. Word spread and 60,000 peasants in both Essex and Kent were in open revolt against the king. The peasants realised they needed a leader and they chose Wat Tyler, a former soldier, as their leader. With their leader chosen, the rebels marched to London and their numbers soon began to grow. The rebels were joined by the poorer people of London, who opened the gates, allowing them into the city. Once they were inside, they attacked the houses of Richard's advisers, including using dynamite to blow up Savoy Palace, which is where one of the king's advisers lived. The rebels also broke into the Tower of London, the only time this has ever happened, and executed the Archbishop of Canterbury. King Richard realised that he needed to do something, so on the 14th of June, Richard rode out and met a group of rebels at Mild End. I am now going to discuss what happened at this meeting. The peasants put forth their demands of less harsh laws, the church's wealth should be given to the poor, and all men should be free and equal. The mayor of London then attacked Wat Tyler, the leader of the revolt. As he died, Tyler ordered the rebels to attack. But Richard stepped forward and said, You should have no captain but me. Just follow me to the fields without, and then you shall have what you wanted. The king promised to the peasants that he would meet their demands. The peasants trusted him, and they later went home. However, the king Richard did not keep his promises. The army was used to put down the revolt, and hundreds of rebels were executed, including John Ball, the radical priest. The heads of the rebels were put on spikes outside of London to warn the rebels of what had happened. Although the revolt was defeated, its demands, less harsh laws, money for the poor, freedom and equality, all became part of democracy later on. The peasants' revolt was a popular uprising and it was the first time the peasants had revolted against the king, demanding their rights and equality. Similar movements such as the Chartists of the 19th century, who were working towards class equality and equal political rights, and the suffragette movement in the 20th century, which was trying to get votes for women, all were similar to the Peasants' Revolt, and in fact partly inspired by it. Both of these events campaigned for greater equality, including the Peasants' Revolt. Today's lesson is going to focus on the outcomes of the revolt and what impact it had on England. On the next slide will be some cards, each explaining an outcome of the Peasants' Revolt. The cards cover lots of different factors such as political, religious and economic outcomes of the revolt. Your job is to decide whether these outcomes are positive or negative. Draw the table that is on the screen in your books. Remember, you are going to need to make your table quite big, bigger than the one that is on the, on the screen. I would dedicate a whole page in your book for this table. Pause the video here to give yourself time to draw the table. Here are the cards that you are going to sort into categories. You need to decide whether the cards show a positive outcome of the Peasants' Revolt or a negative one. Let's do the first one together. If we look at this card here, some historians believe that the revolt made Richard proud and overconfident and that it made him rule in such a way it led to his downfall in 1399. We need to decide whether this card shows a positive outcome of the Peasants' Revolt or a negative one. Let's have a look at our table. To remind you, the first card said, Some historians believe that the revolt made Richard proud and overconfident, and that it made him rule in such a way that led to his downfall in, in 1399. Does this show a positive outcome of the Peasants' Revolt or a negative one? I have placed this card in the negative box because it's showing that Richard became proud and overconfident, which made him rule in a really bad way. 
and in fact it then led to his downcome later on in 1399. So this is a very negative outcome of the Peasants' Revolt. In fact, after the Peasants' Revolt, the 14-year-old king became bolder in his decisions and he stopped relying on his advisers. He took control of government, but his actions proved unpopular with them and many of his ideas were defeated. Later on, the barons and nobility turned against the king and he was imprisoned in Pontefract Castle and he died four months later. This makes this card a negative outcome of the Peasants' Revolt. Pause the video here to update your table with the card that we have just done together. Now that I have shown you how to do this task, you are going to have a go at sorting the rest of the cards into the two categories. Here are the cards that you are going to be sorting out. Remember, we have done the first one together. I will highlight the first card so you know that it has already been done. Pause the video here to give yourself time to read through the cards and sort them into your table. I have colour coded the cards to show you which are the positive outcomes and which are the negative. The positive outcomes are colour coded as green and the negative outcomes are colour coded as red. Check this slide against your own work to make sure that you have got the right cards in the right section. Pause the video here to allow yourself time to check your work against this slide. Let's go over then some of the outcomes of the Peasants' Revolt. There are several positive and negative outcomes of the Peasants' Revolt. One negative was that the king betrayed his people. Richard promised the rebels that he would meet their demands, but instead he went back on his promises and killed the rebels. Richard only promised to listen to the peasants and agree to their demands in order to get them to go home and stop revolting. This highlighted the poor relationship between the king and his subjects, as he continued to control the peasants and ignore their demands after the revolt ended. In fact, the rebels were hanged and their, hand and their heads were put on spikes across London, which sent a very strong message to the peasants that if they revolted again, this would be the outcome. This meant that the lives of the peasants did not change for many years. They were still controlled by the barons and had very little freedom. This shows a negative outcome of the Peasants' Revolt. On the other hand, a positive outcome of the Peasants' Revolt was that it frightened the rich so much it made them realise they could only push the poor so far. The revolt demonstrated that peasants were willing to come together and rebel against the king and the nobility in order to get what they wanted. This had never happened on this scale before in medieval England. Due to the Peasants' Revolt and the fact that so many peasants rebelled against the king, no government collected a poll tax until 1990. This is over 600 years later. However, the government was very angry at the role that John Ball played in the Peasants' Revolt. Ball belonged to a group of Christians called the Lollards, and they believed that churchmen should leave simple lives and the Bible should be translated into English. The Lollards were challenging the power of the church, wanting their money to be spread amongst the poor, and they were also very critical of the king. For the next century, the government persecuted the Lollards because they were seen as linked to the rebellion. Remember, John Ball was a leader in the Peasants' Revolt, and he was responsible for going around England and spreading the message of equality to the peasants, inspiring them to take part in the revolt. This was a negative outcome of the Peasants' Revolt, as the, ch as the government started to persecute the Lollards and other religious groups. A final positive but long-lasting outcome of the Peasants' Revolt was that over the, last, over the following 50 years, the demands of the peasants were largely met. Even though they were on the king's conditions and not a direct of the revolt, peasants could now work for more money and slowly gained more freedoms from their lords to work where they pleased and to make more choices of their own, such as who they wanted to marry. What I want you to do is select three outcomes from your table and think about what is the most important cause 
important outcome of the revolt? There is no correct answer in this. Have a think about it and make some decisions. We are going to do a pyramid of importance similar to the one that we did for the peasants' revolt. The most important cause goes on the top of the pyramid, as shown here. The second most important cause goes on the bottom left of the pyramid, as shown here. And the third most important cause goes on the bottom right of the pyramid, as shown here. Pause the video here to give yourself time to draw your pyramid. You might need to leave a lot of space for this. Let's do one together. I'm going to show you what I thought was the most important outcome of the Peasants' Revolt. This outcome will go on the top of the pyramid. The one that I have chosen is, it showed that the peasants could threaten the power of the king and the barons if they joined together and acted collectively. This is an outcome that I have got from my table that we did earlier of the positive and negative outcomes. It doesn't matter if your outcome is positive or negative, it's just your opinion. If you think it is important, put it at the top of your pyramid, regardless of whether it is positive or negative. So my outcome is a positive one, and I have placed it at the top of my pyramid, because I think that the peasants banding together demonstrates their power, which is an important thing. Have a go at choosing your three outcomes from your table and putting them in your pyramid. Remember, the most important cause goes at the top of the pyramid. The second most important cause goes on the bottom left. And the third most important cause goes on the bottom right. Once you have done that, pick your top cause and explain underneath your pyramid why you think you, why you chose this one. I explained in the slide before that I had chose my, my outcome because I believed that banding together showed that the peasants had power. That is my explanation. Pause the video here so that you can create your pyramid of importance. Don't forget to write your explanation underneath your pyramid for your most important cause. The final task for today's lesson is to write a small paragraph answering this question. Did England change as a result of the Peasants' Revolt? Use all the information that you have collected today to think about, did the Peasants' Revolt change England? Think about the outcomes that we have looked at. Whether they are positive or negative, did they change England? Write a paragraph including your opinion. Remember, include explanation in your answer. This is a really important history skill and we need to get used to using it in our answers. I have given you a sentence starter here in the yellow box. I think that the Peasants' Revolt did or did not change England because. That's going to be your sentence starter and you choose whether you think it did change England or did not. I have also given you a top tip. If you want to breach really good bands, such as a band A or a band B, include examples from the outcomes that you have looked at today in your answer. Once you have written your paragraph, be ready to share your answer in the Q&A box of your live lesson once you have finished. Pause the video here to give yourself time to complete your paragraph. 